distinguished guests, illustrious listeners, please welcome to the stage the inimitable, the incomparable, the one, the only, Amos Tory, broadcasting live from the Dead Divas Land. All right. Hello, 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 everybody joining us in the Dead Divas Lounge today. We have the internationally acclaimed drag artist, performer, host, producer, educator, and one of the stars of BBC's RuPaul's Drag Race UK season six, Miss Dita Garbo. Yay! Dita, Dita, da 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 Dita. Hello. Are you sick of hearing that by now? I'm not at all. No, I'm the... singing it. Keep no, good, 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 good. <laughs> Uh, with a vibrant career that spans hosting events, drag brunches, cabarets, to educating in schools and uplifting the local LGBTQ plus community, she truly embodies the spirit of performance. Dita is also renowned for legendary Kings, Queens and In-Betweens Drag Cabaret Night, uh, where Dita brings parties to life as the ultimate hostess. Today, Dita will be sharing insights into the life and the legacy of a namesake, the iconic Hollywood star Greta Garbo. Uh, and how that influence shapes her artistry today. We'll also be discussing the new single Dance Bitch, which has been playing a lot in this house, uh, and of course getting some of the tea on RuPaul's Drag Race. So without further ado, let's welcome the fabulous Dita Garbo to the Dead Divas Lounge. <laughs> welcome, Dita. <Hello. laughs> Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. No, it is how a pleasure to have you. Is it... I'm doing good. I'm doing okay. I'm, um, I started in, in honour of... Greta Garbo, who I heard likes a dirty martini, uh, that might not be true, oh. but I heard it's true, so it's good enough for me. So I had, I had. I one. guess well, it's, I guess it's past midday, so that's okay, right? <laughs> like just past midday. <laughs> so, so, Dita, you're famously known as the love child of Dita Fontes and Greta Garbo. Can you tell us a little bit about how you first discovered Greta Garbo uh, and her work? What's what's your sort of first memory of her okay well yeah as so my first kind of introduction to a lot of, actually of the old hollywood golden age glamazons um was uh. when i was working in madrid i was working in a show and we had a an amazing quick change artist who did quick change it was his act um uh. and literally went from ping pong into Marlene Dietrich into Rita Hayworth into oh, Marilyn Monroe, Edith Piaf, Charlie Chaplin, like oh, the list goes on. Uh, um, and like, like I a was Charles Pierce kind of, the, yeah, yeah, like, and the quick changes were just like literally five yeah. second changes, and everything wow. changed eyebrows, like wigs, what outfit, like, and so, yeah, so that was my first kind of introduction to all of those kind of like big Hollywood names. And so it was from that point on, I was like, well, I'm yeah. going to learn a little bit more about these these gorgeous, amazing people. Um, so, yeah, I guess yeah. that was my very first introduction into Garbo. And then um, when I started reading up on a few of the different Hollywood actresses, Garbo just really resonated with me as a person. Yeah. Yeah. And she has, like, she's one of those names that just sort of has absolutely sort of withstood the test of time hasn't she like like marlena dietrich um what was it about garbo then yeah, when you started no. kind of going back and discovering her um what was it that sort of really resonated do you think it was specifically about her because obviously there's all of those hollywood icons that you just mentioned marlena dietrich and um rita hayworth and people like that and barbara steinwick and people like that but what was it specific do you think about garbo that really spoke to you um, I think it was, I mean, she had a captivating beauty and sensuality about her, which was just oh. on screen was just phenomenal. And you just couldn't take your eyes off. her. that's why she was a leading lady for so many years. Yeah. yeah. But not just that. I, um, I really kind of also like finding out about her as a person as well. I really resonated with her as a person because although I'm a drag artist and I'm very extrovert in what I do I'm also very introverted and she was very much a recluse in her private life yeah and you know wasn't one for going to big occasions or 
you know having interviews with the with the press and stuff and i think yeah that's what also gave her this kind of mysterious ethereal kind of goddessly oh, right. um yeah impression that it's just an kind otherworldly of less yeah less. um yeah and also um it's you know it was a very different world to what it is today today i think oh. you know um we take photos all the time but when you only see a select few photos that just kind of have a power to them they they stand the test of time and and go on for years i mean it's been nearly a century yeah. now since <laughs> she first came to like the screen oh so um oh my god know, it has that's, that's really kind of what yeah, i know yeah i know i'm, I'm quite that's old, wild to I? think but I yes heard, of course it has but yeah my mother <laughs> um, <laughs> she uh, heard you when she was very old yeah. yes she did she did she did <laughs> um but yeah that's that's what kind of resonated with me specifically with with bretta um and yeah. also just love the name as you can tell uh, it's so good it's so good isn't it <laughs> um do you have like a particular like favorite movie of hers i know she's kind of like started in the um, sort of silent era and there's one of the few i think i'm so right in saying this one of the few actresses of that era to make the transition from silent film to um to spoken word film and did it really well when it sort of killed off a lot of people's careers she did it really successfully um do you have like a favorite film from from either era basically yeah. oh um so i think oh, probably her most acclaimed film um would have been mill in 1937 and i think she also felt that that was her best acting moment um yeah. I mean, there's, I mean, there's too many to choose from. There's the Grand Hotel, which everybody knows. Yeah. Uh, line, yeah. You know, I want to be alone. Yeah. <laughs> I want to be alone. <laughs> but also, like, like you said, like going back to um, the silent movies, um, I'm trying to think of the, the movie, um, Flesh and the Devil, um, which was probably uh. one of her best silent movie features. Um, and she just had this, she played a lot of those sort of like romantic melodrama type roles, but that's what she was incredible at. And and like you said, yes, she was yeah. one of very few um, actors and actresses from the silent movies that that transgressed into the world of talkies, as they yeah. called them back then. Um, yeah, and that's also what resonated with me as well. Right, like, and I was I've yeah. been a professional dancer all my life. And as a dancer, yep. you don't have a voice. So you're quite silent in what you do. Uh, and then coming back to drag later yeah. in life, I was like, well, now I also have a voice and I'm going to use it. So that's where Garbo yeah. also, I was like, that's such a good point. Yeah. <laughs> that's such a, yeah, because you have to talk through your body language and through your movement or, or even like if it's in still photos or just through your eyes or through your um yeah it's just your sort of presence that's, that's something i actually hadn't hadn't thought about yeah because even like my marlena dietrich and those ones kind of they could always i think they pretty much always i don't know if that's right if marlena dietrich started before or after the sort of talkies but i always think of her as having that low sort of voice that kind of everybody sort of thinks of um but greta had to do it before that and get and gain attention which is kind of amazing actually to to be able to do that yeah yeah and 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 it is very much it's very like drag it's as well isn't it because it is yeah. yeah and because like you're having to portray emotion and stuff without any sound whatsoever um which is as dancers with what we're trained to do especially ballet dancers i mean like it's all about showing emotion through movement um so yeah, like that's that's where she absolutely resonated with me, and that's yeah. past the name. <laughs> yeah, I I claim it. It's on the it's on the birth certificate now. <laughs> it's official. Um, her name's kind of synonymous with old, you know, old Hollywood glamour. Obviously, like Madonna kind of references her, along with all of the kind of Hollywood icons in Vogue. And um, 
why do you think she's got such this enduring legacy that kind of goes on to this day, like you say, near a hundred years later? Oh, I mean, well, she was beautiful. We just talk about her beauty. Because, oh my God, the um, beauty. She, Ridiculous. She Wasn't she signed face. off like photos or something like that? Or have I made that up? Like, No, uh, well, before she got into to, to movies, um, I know she started off working, um, she was modeling hats. <laughs> and um uh, and then she again, got she how, got, um, I mean <laughs> <laughs> and then she got how to decide to actually I know and then so, and then she started modeling and then from there I think she um, went and trained um and then she was picked up. So um yeah I think So it's actually in it person her, kind of yeah. In person modeling yeah, I, I think suppose. part of it is uh, as a beauty. She was a beautiful woman and yeah. and on screen very captivating um but i also think it was probably her charm and her and again going back to her sort of her reclusiveness that she uh. she wasn't she didn't want to be in everyone's faces um she was yeah. she she enjoyed what she did she did what she did she did it really well yeah. i mean I, there's you know, there's even descriptions of in her movies where literally she would ask the director to leave because she, <laughs> she also felt very insecure about people just staring at her while she was right. performing. Um, right. And I think it's kind of that. And did the did the director do it? Like, did they say okay? Oh no! <laughs> like that no, was gonna, the director. Because I was gonna. But if anybody like I was gonna say, if anybody they were, go were gonna do it for, they might do it for Greta. Exactly, exactly, yeah. Um, so, yeah, and I think also the fact that she didn't um, attend a lot of public engagements uh. or have interviews, just, um, again, it's it's very different to fame of today. A lot of people today, uh. when they're hunting for fame, um, want to be absolutely everywhere and in everybody's faces. Uh. And, yes, that does mean that you're going to, be seen a lot more but also on the flip side of that people also can get tired of that and and sometimes yeah. when you are a bit recluse um that holds that mystery and then people want to know more so so i think she she just played a very good game at life <laughs> yeah so when she said i want to be alone everybody was like oh now we now we really now we're really <laughs> interested <laughs> exactly yeah it's such a funny exactly. thing isn't it because a lot of these hollywood icons as well like because i think marlene dietrich became kind of a bit of a recluse in her sort of um latter years as well um i think edith piaf did a little bit too and it's it's, it's funny because that's something i really gravitate towards is something like just being this fierce recluse yeah, but yeah. you've got this amazing iconic image and body of work and that's the thing i I mean, for me, it's almost like the body of work is what's important to them, not the, you know, the sort of other parts of the fame game. Do, do you think that's right? I definitely, I definitely agree with that. And um, yeah, I think when you've when you've when you've been in film or when you, you've had something documented in that way, um, that will last forever. Um, yeah, you, you know, it's I guess as well, like. You don't want to. How can you top some of those things? You can't. And yeah. and also, I think as you get older, you just you know you do just want to have a calmer, quiet life. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm not mad at you know, it. Hats off to them. You know. And um, what do you think it is about like divas from that sort of golden age of Hollywood, like the NGM years, um, that speak so much, particularly to uh, LGBTQ people, but particularly to sort of gay boys it seems well most young boys like an older woman <laughs> but um no i think actually <laughs> i think actually like our community we, we can resonate with them from the fact that most of those hollywood women um were actually ruled by white privileged men and um uh... and a lot of their a lot of their journey and a lot of even their image was was down to that. So I think personally, like I can resonate with that. 
because even in today's society, we're still ruled by white privileged men. And, um, and we all kind of, especially as an LGBTQ plus community, like we still got so far to go. And, um, yeah. And yeah, we just, I, I personally, that's, that's how I feel that our community resonates with some of these, these women of that era, because although we see them as strong, independent women, there was a lot behind the scenes that we didn't see uh, and a lot of very controlling all the struggles. People. Yeah. Um, yeah. So actually, um, although they were there and in the public eye and, and seen and, and we, and we just think of these fabulous individuals, they were also, um, they also didn't have their own freedoms and uh, were very controlled. So, you know, that resonates with us as LGBTQ plus people. Yeah. Because we still don't have complete freedom. Yeah. In many parts of the world and, well, even in some ways in this country. Yeah, uh, I mean... In many ways I mean, in this we're country, lucky but here lots in, of places in the world, yeah. We're, yeah, we're lucky here in the UK, um, although things are starting to go backwards. Um, yeah. But God forbid that, like, you know, many people here don't even understand what it's like to be in a country where yeah. that you can get the death penalty for, for being yeah. who you are. And something so, like 12 countries currently, I think, in the world. I, I know, might have that wrong, but I think it's, it's something like 12 countries where you can get and the death penalty. And, yeah. and, and another thing is when we talk about, you know, um, always in the, new we're here, in the news we're hearing about migrants and asylum seekers and everything else but also uh, a lot of those and i've met them because i live on the southeast coast and i've actually you know uh, been on the beach yeah. when the boats come ashore and help people but there are members of God. our community in there and and yeah. and of course like they you know they're, they're and of course they're fleeing life. because yeah yeah so um yeah um yeah we are lucky here but equally there is still a lot more to do in our own country if we are going to be yeah. leaders throughout the world yeah, right the leaders that we think we are all sort of claim claim to be yeah yeah and do you think that um because one thing that i didn't know about garbo was that she was a member of the community that she had um i she know. didn't necessarily yeah. I know she, she i didn't know that until sort of researching her a bit more and so she's had affairs with women and um, maybe was bisexual, maybe, you know, uh, she didn't quite ever define exactly what it was, um, how, how she saw herself, how she identified herself. Um, I mean, it's hard to know, but do you think that it's hard to know that did that play any part in sort of being drawn to her or. I don't know, I, I guess I don't really have well, a question yeah, for that, I mean... but it's just an interesting element to me that. <laughs> yeah i mean um good honor do you know what i mean so <laughs> yeah for actually just in that time as and well being, and, and exactly and being with people who see the thing is um like you could be you can you can put a label on it you can call somebody a gay or a lesbian uh. or or bisexual um but actually some people are very just free-spirited and if if they uh. fall in love with a man or a woman they generally fall in love with the person and the way that that yeah. person treats them. Um, so I kind of have a feeling that she had that sort of aura yeah. about her. Um, who knows? She might have been like me and been non-binary. Just that, <laughs> yeah. you know, um, yeah. again. Yeah. Before that before we, that had we... a, a terminology. Exactly. Like, you know, for me, yeah. I didn't even have that terminology growing up. So right. let alone, you know, yeah. 70, 80 years ago, like, yeah, yeah. so who knows? But um, good honour. <laughs> yeah, very much so. Very much good honour. Um, so, Will, you recently starred in uh, season six, RuPaul's Drag Race. Were any of your sort of fellow queens familiar with Greta because like I because I, I this is the, one of the things that came to my mind is like when I when I first saw the the meet the queens episode I was just like I wonder if any of the other girls are gonna know that the name refers well, to to Greta Garbo <laughs> did did any of them know yeah. or was it like a nice little well, opportunity to uh you know to to 
to to preach about the the gospel of Greta? Yeah, well, no, a couple of them did. I mean, Lavoie did. Yeah, um, you of know, course, she's, Lavoie. <laughs> um, she's a very experienced queen, so she yeah. she would know definitely <laughs> who Greta Garbo yeah. is. But equally, Marmalade, um, Marmalade yep. and Greta, ah. um, and I think also because Marmalade is a fashion queen and she loves a lot of yeah. like old Hollywood from like the nineteen twenties yeah. and thirties. So she yeah. she knew who Greta Garbo was. And the same with Chanel. Chanel knew who Greta was again, right? Because they, she's a designer and she makes things. Yeah. So I think, you know, when you when you do that and you look back at history, you then yeah start to see all the people from there. But I mean, yeah, I mean, there was a couple of the younger queens that had no idea. <laughs> um, uh, do they know they now? Thought, you know, um, well, I hope they do. They're gonna know. They're gonna know. <laughs> They're gonna know. Yeah, definitely gonna know. But um, <laughs> but no, I mean, even like um, I don't think I don't think it was actually shown on TV. But um, there was a point when um, when I first met Rue, and and Rue said to me, "Oh, you've got some big shoes to fill. Are you uh, going to be able to fill them?" And I was like, "Yes, bitch, I am. Thank yeah. you very much." <laughs> I sure but, yeah, am. I mean. Rude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so I would say, well, three or four of the girls probably knew who Greta yeah. was, um, and just didn't think that I just invented the name Garbo. Right? Because <laughs> it rhymes. I love that. So Where'd you come up? That? <laughs> is Hello. it is it kind of exciting then to think that you know there's a whole new generation now that might kind of go back and rediscover, um, sort of Greta Garbo and her work and her films? Yeah, definitely because. I mean, just because she's no longer with us mm. doesn't mean... And also, just because her movies could be 50, 60 plus years old doesn't mean they're not good movies. Yeah, Like, good movies stand the test of time. And so, yeah, it's, it's, it's lovely for me to think that a whole new generation of people yeah. will not only from seeing me um, and hearing about, you know, where where I got my influences from, where my yep. name comes from, and then also, you know, start to look in and find out who she was. But yeah. yeah um, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of, it's, it's crazy that I feel like I'm a trailblazer. In you are, yeah. I'm not a trailblazer. No, but you, but it's like, that's the thing. It's like, it's, it's funny. Cause it's like, I, I don't know if you think this, but it's like one thing that sort of, as a slightly older queen myself, <laughs> not that you are you're a babe in the woods um i'm 275,000 years old but um it's sort of funny that you sort of i wonder it seems to me that it's kind of like when you're looking back at uh, sort of drag queens through sort of like you know the 50s 60s 70s even into the kind of 90s seem to be that their influences really were you know the Marnelli Dietrichs the Judy Garland's the kind of you know god all all of those kind of old hollywood sort of stars um and it seems like now maybe some of sort of younger queens, their influences are other queens. Is that? Is, yeah. Am I alone in thinking that? No, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, because like it's crazy to me. Like, um, so I worked as a professional dancer and I worked around the world for like 11 years. And then when I came back to the UK um, was actually when series one of the American version mm. first aired. Right. Yeah. So like I saw it from the beginning, but obviously I knew of RuPaul from back in the nineties yeah. and, and stuff that they'd done. Um and yeah, like now to meet queens that have literally just grown up watching drag race and kind of their their inspiration for drag is just what they've seen on the T V. Yeah. Whereas yeah. for a slightly more mature queens. <laughs> um, we did. We looked back at like yeah. phenomenal actresses, singers, you know, um, and all all of that. So it's yeah. nice. It's nice, I guess, for you know, also to kind of now be a role model for for younger queens. Yeah, it's funny because you've got now then sort of younger queens discovering you, discovering old Hollywood stars it's like a really lovely sort yeah. of um full circle moment I suppose in in a way yeah um, and it's yeah it's not kind of like I guess be that string that kind of ties yeah. these things together and allows yeah. people to then 
go on and find new things because yeah you know that's that's how we we all grow as people not just through yeah. like sitting and learning from one thing is that yeah. discovering from that thing where their inspiration came from and 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 then just branching out and so yeah no it's 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 cool it's crazy yeah. but uh i like it so speak it speaking of having more than one influence then would you have done greta on snatch game or would you have done dita is it uh would you have done dita on teaser or would you have done greta or would it be I someone would else? I have done neither. Oh, <laughs> um, you okay. know what it is? Okay. I think, I think, um, especially like with, so for, with Tita Gontis, she's around, we see her, we yeah. hear her all the time. Um, and again, I think what her charm is, is she's a dancer. She's a burlesque yeah. performer. Yeah. Yeah. So it's her, it's her performance that captivates people. She's not a kooky, funny queen. Right. right. <laughs> so I think it would be quite hard to to make Dita funny yeah. Yeah. in a snatch game yeah. situation. Likewise, Greta wasn't really known for her comedy. Mm. Yes, there are a couple of films that she did that had more comedic roles, yeah. but but ultimately she was more of a romantic, melancholy type and I know some queens have like done deep Marlene Dietrich before. Yeah. Um, but also I'm not like, I'm not a, an impersonator. Like, yeah. I'm yeah. Like shit with, with voices. I'm not so either. I'd have to, yeah. No. So it's, I was it's like, a really no. Tough... And, also, yeah. and also I just wouldn't want to put her to shame. Like I wouldn't <laughs> want to turn in a grave. You know what I mean? <laughs> so no, um, neither of those, I chose snatch game. I chose something completely different. Are you allowed to say who it was? Um, I can say, yeah, because it's going to air, what, this Thursday, but uh, yeah, I chose to do a version of the Tooth Fairy. Oh, amazing. That's so good. Because no one knows what the yeah. Tooth Fairy sounds like. Exactly. So, that's, you know, that's you can really... inspired, I yeah. think that they're the best characters to play on Snatch Game, is, is characters that we all kind of know, but yeah. don't really know. Yeah, so you so, can yeah, really play with it. Like... and. And would your tooth yeah. fairy, uh, is it, would it be uh, sort of dark and sinister or? Uh, oh, or... she was wretched. Yeah. Love it. She was a wretched tooth fairy. I mean, she was ugly it... as sin. You're wretched. <laughs> oh, my God. Love it. Did we just get the exclusive uh, tooth fairy? I think you might have done. Amazing. That's literally amazing. <laughs> I mean, she's a she's a fairy that's going around stealing children's tooth. She would she would be, she would be wretched, right? <laughs> she she is, yeah. But she, like my my tooth fairy didn't just like teeth. She likes anything that kind of resembled teeth. So even horns, she would amazing. She would have a bit of a fetish oh, wow. as well. Or... Yeah. <laughs> so I see um, a, I'm a boar. Gonna... I'm going for the horns. I see a deer. I'm going for the antler. I'm taking it all. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Nice. Um, and I'm actually um tomorrow I'm gonna I'm. Because I've already photographed all of my looks. Yeah. And then I was like, actually, I know what. The Tooth Fairy needs to do a lip sync to Dieter's track. Oh, my God. <laughs> Is that coming so, out? Yes, I'm going to record that tomorrow. Amazing. I will release that, yes. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> amazing. Okay, I cannot wait to see that. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Also, I feel like there could be a whole show that is now uh, Dieter Garbo as the Tooth Fairy. I would like to live in that world for a good couple of hours on stage. Yeah. Well, if I, it ever develops into a, a I know, thing. I know I went home on an acting challenge. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> what I love doing is playing characters and yeah. producing characters. Um, and that, that for me is really fun. Yeah. And, and when I, when I, came up with the two fairies for, yeah. for Snatch Game, I was like, oh, actually, like, I really love this character. Yeah. And she's so different to Dita right. that, like, yeah, I, I think she's going to, she might be having her own little stint at doing a few things too. Uh, amazing. Okay. Love, <laughs> would love to see that. That's very exciting. That's very, very exciting. So yeah, I think she'd be quite good at interviewing people too. Yeah. Yeah. Although she might want to rip their teeth out by oh, the end she, of the interview. She'd let them, like, answer the questions. And then, you know, once they were done, then she'd have the teeth. Because, you know. Yes. Yeah. 
It's or, like this... or actually, she doesn't <laughs> mind even if they're not your tea. If, if you've got somebody else, just bring tea, some just as long tea. As you can give her some tea. Oh yeah. yeah, fine. Just bring it like a like as tribute as like a yeah, yeah. the offering offering of teeth. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she's not. Yeah, she she doesn't mind what type of teeth or where they come from. She okay, like so tea. on the door when we come to the show, we'll bring some. We'll bring our ticket, but we'll bring some teeth as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, definitely. Good to know. I'm not getting turned away on the door. Like I would. <laughs> um. So well, you are speaking about some of the things you're doing next. Then. So. What is next, um, Fadita? You mentioned obviously the single "Dance Bitch," which is so ridiculously, insanely catchy. Well, uh, first of all, can you tell us a little bit more about how the how the <laughs> the track came about? How the tra- yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so funnily enough, like uh, my partner is a musician, right? And um, and they created like just a fifty second clip for yeah. me to come on to stage. So if I was hosting an event. We play it and I could come on to Dita, Dita, right. Da, 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 Dita. Right. And then going on the show, we were told that there was going to be a cabaret performance and you could have up to 90 seconds. So we were like, okay, uh, let's extend that's 90. This. That's all they give you, 90 seconds to when they do the seconds. talent show? Mm. Wow, yeah, okay. yeah. Right. So, so it went from 50 seconds to 90 seconds. Right. So in that time was when Dance Bits arrived. Uh. That was then. And then literally from the moment i did that and we filmed it every cast member every crew member would yeah. sing it to me every day so i was like it's an earworm like this everybody is the dream it. as everybody a song sings it. as somebody that worked because my background is music music industry did music production and write songs that's my that is the also like i remember there's a book i can't remember there's a book called six tips of songwriting success and it's by really really famous uh, songwriter who oh my god the name has escaped me now but it, John Bloom I think Jonathan Bloom something like that um, who's written for Whitney and Mariah and Madonna says when you get like um, the person that's doing the hoovering and you notice that they're humming it or the person over there they're humming it and that that's a, that's that's when you know that's a hit yeah and that's what and you literally, had literally like yeah I know and I get messages from people like literally every day going this song is still in my head I can't Amazing. get it out of my head and I'm like yeah that is but yeah so then so yeah so then from that i was like well i need to release it as a full track yeah um because absolutely you know, because the children will be hungry for it if you don't they will be Knock and your also door down. then i don't have to pay royalties i can just perform to myself <laughs> so yeah so then so yeah then it, it turned into a full three minute track added in two new verses and yeah. and all of that but yeah and even down to the music video like yeah. um i was like i need to do this on a sh- like a shoestring budget yeah. which i did but luckily um, it doesn't look like a shoestring look- budget that i suppose that's the mark of a uh, of a queen that knows what they're doing is you take something wow. and you s- spin straw into gold thank you yeah well i i i've, I've used all local people basically yeah. so um a local filmographer who yeah actually directed and produced it for me it was incredible um and you know they linked up with great camera guy and everything else and the venue was the theater that i use that i do my shows at so i kind of wanted to make sure that yeah. that was in it as like, which theater you know, is that you... to let people... it's the it's the tower theater in folkestone ah uh, cool yes I've heard of it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then also down to dancers, I was like, well, I want dancers in it. And I was yeah. like, okay. So I contacted my old college. I went to Performance College in Essex. Right. Graduated there like 26, 30 years ago. <laughs> 30 years ago now. <laughs> um, yeah. Graduated from there. But I was like, it'd be really lovely if I could use some of your students. And they yeah. were like, great. And then they sent me through a whole load uh... of headshots for me to choose from. And and like I picked the dancers, and I didn't meet them until the day of the shoot. Yeah. I sent them a video of the of what the choreography was. They were so professional. Yeah, they learned here, fabulous. Um, and yeah, and they were just like thrilled to be part of it. And then I even took them to heaven when I performed at heaven the other week. So, uh, my God, amazing! Yeah. how was that? How was that yeah. experience? Oh, that's incredible. an iconic stage. It is an iconic stage, and that was also the very first club, gay club that I ever went to. So. Yeah, another kind of full circle, full circle moment. Full circle yeah, moment. yeah. Oh, that is very exciting. That's so cool. Oh wow. So, yeah. um, 
are you where can people see you sort of performing the song have you got um dates coming i mean you know there are the club dates or um a dita garbo show in the works and yeah what what can people well <laughs> where can people find um, you where can people find me so if if people follow me on any of my social medias um Dita Garbo. There is only one Dita Garbo. The only. <laughs> so pretty easy to find. Um, but yeah, if you follow me on any social media, in my link tree, then I put up if I'm doing shows. And yep. generally on my stories, I put out promotions and stuff for where I'm going. Um, I think you mentioned earlier that, yes, I also run um, Punk and Flume, a show called Kings, yeah. Queens and Inbetweens. Yeah. Um, I've got another one of those coming up on the 30th of November in Folkestone. Ooh. Okay, very soon, yeah. So if you're in Kent, come on down. Yeah. Um, I've also got my sister Kiki down. You know, we might have a yeah. rematch of that, oh, um, <laughs> that dreaded lip thing. Who knows? <laughs> but it was such a good lip sync. That's the thing. It was like, you're yeah, both yeah, so yeah. good. It was such an entertaining lip sync to watch. And your look was amazing as well. Like, Thank you. Not yeah, to pick I, favorites, I but was, it was it was my favorite look. I was honestly hoping my look would save me. And it yeah. didn't. But so he did like, say, okay. um, uh, Le Bon, he did say this is actually the most accurate look. Oh, yeah, yeah. Simon Le Bon loved it. Yeah. 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 It was like, well, I don't care what anybody asked me. Yeah, yeah. And he, um, not being funny, but he would know. Like, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And also, it was really weird because obviously, like, I grew up listening to their music. Yeah. So, yeah. Then to, like, have Simon there saying all these wonderful things about me was like, oh, another surreal moment in my life uh, that's pretty cool isn't it yeah uh, that's like yeah that an, another full circle moment that's yeah i know <laughs> so we've so we, th so that's what's coming up for for dita and i mean i will at the end of this i will obviously tell everybody we'll do a whole little section on your um where they can find you on social media and all the platforms and et cetera and all of that. Um, mm -hmm. But I can't let you leave without doing uh, a little game that we like to play called, well, this one's called Garbo or Garbage. <laughs> okay. This is a bit experimental. Okay. This could go completely awry. <laughs> so there's a few facts about uh, Garbo that, um, again, like I say, that came to research and came as uh, very like shocking things to me, interesting things to me. Um, so we're going to go through them. See, so if it's Garbo, it's, um, it's accurate. It's true. That fact is true. Uh, or it's garbage and it, and it's not true. So do you want to play Garbo or Garbage? I would love to play <laughs> Garbo or Garbage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So first, first one, um, in 1938, uh, she, along with Mylena Dietrich, Catherine Hepburn, were labelled box office poison by the Independent Theatre Owners Association of America. Is that Garbo or Garbage? That's Garbo. It is Garbo. <laughs> they actually were, which is crazy because she didn't really have a flop. Like, a, like no, but when she got what? near, like that was right at the end of her career, and she did have one movie uh, that didn't go as well. And uh, then yeah, and then that's that's what they were listed right. as is. In all of the papers, which is so wild, it's like okay, so she's a, a, a sort of prisoner to her own former success. Yeah, like yeah, <laughs> I mean it's wild, isn't it? For those for those three to be named box office poisoners, like I'm pretty sure they I know industry afloat for maybe that's that's what made them turn into recluses yeah <laughs> branded I, I poison. and all of them <laughs> did right i because marlena dietrich definitely became a cruise along with garbo like so i don't yeah. know if Catherine hepburn did but i maybe i wouldn't be surprised if she did to be honest yeah After that. i think well, I, I don't think she was so much of a recluse but yeah right um okay next one an american director once said of garbo uh i have seen her change from love to hate and never alter her facial expression. Is that Gobar? Garbo? Or... I, I think, think that's don't... Garbo. Apparently it's Garbo. But I, um, I, do, but I don't actually have the name of the director. That's my poor research. I need to go find that. <laughs> um, can't remember who it was. I lie. It could be Garbage. <laughs> but the thing is, like, it's funny because I do remember the being, I can't remember what film it was, but um, one of the directors said to her, 
do nothing think nothing i want nothing i want you to i want you to think of absolutely nothing and it's amazing that she oh. could convey i can't remember who said that i don't know if you know but yeah i think i can't remember the name which film it was either but it was um, when she it was on the end of, like she was on the stern of a, of a boat yes 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 and, and she's looking yeah, off, they, that, yes. that's what they told her just like just look blank which is amazing because it's like I, I don't know like what trick that is of a, a of an actress like uh, kind of but it's amazing because it's like to think nothing and yet be projecting so much is I mean a real I, you skill. know surely not yeah bollocks <laughs> <laughs> exactly you know <laughs> um, so okay. in the 1950s she was named the most beautiful woman that ever lived. Uh, by the Guinness Book of World Records. Is that Garbo or Garbage? Garbo. It is Garbo. She absolutely was. And obvious. I mean, come on, look at that face. It, if I she know. wasn't, and, it, and would look, be, it would be an absolute I am. Pride. I am my mother's daughter. Exactly. The face, the face is correct. The mug is correct. Uh, all right, last one on the Garbo Garbage. Uh, Garbo refused to sign an autograph uh, for a wounded World War II veteran. Oh, I think that would be garbage. It is garbage. It is absolutely garbage. And apparently it all came from this thing that, like, when the war happened, that Marlena Dietrich was kind of doing loads and loads and loads and loads for the war effort, and they kind of wanted her to do more or something like that. So then I think there was this, I don't know, backlash against her because they didn't think that she was doing an off or something like that. So... Then people just make up wild rumours. It's amazing how why people would want to become a recluse, isn't it? <laughs> like, I know, I know. <laughs> it's funny that, but speaking of her reclusive years, this is uh, um, just I'm spitballing now, but like because apparently she was like fil- um, photographed quite a lot in New York in the years, kind of once she'd become a recluse. Like she she wasn't a recluse in the way like Marlene Dietrich was, where she never left her. I think her apartment for like 10 years and just oh, no, drank like, champagne. Yeah. I mean, she'd go out and she'd go shopping and she'd yeah. just do all the Walk normal around, things. Right? Yeah. yeah. And apparently like whenever she'd get spotted, she would just, um, she would just see people and go, <laughs> and just sort of be like, <laughs> I know you know who I am and it's great and it's okay, but it's okay. Um, I love that. I think that's just yeah. absolutely, just, like... just so fierce. Just amazing. Amazing. I love that. Um, all right. Well, we thank you so much, Dita, for coming on the show and talking about this icon. One icon talking about another icon. It's 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 oh, thank what, you. it's what I live for. Um, I like to sort of end the show with like just putting um, you know, giving I say giving the diva a little chance to kind of um, sort of in their own words. So I picked like three quotes um that I think are are really beautiful and kind of really um poignant. Uh, that Greta said um, one of them was like life would be so wonderful if we only know what to do with it and it's just like she knew what to do with it because (laughs) she yeah has this two like a a hundred year legacy now like well I'm sure it will go on longer than that Um, she also said every one of us lives this life just once if we are honest uh, to live it once is enough and that is to me also very true it's an it's once is enough, right? Who's trying to do this again? Yeah. Like, yeah, <laughs> no, God. I wouldn't, I, I always say I wouldn't want to go back and, and be in my 20s, let alone my 30s. No. Because now I'm in my no. nearly 50s. So, uh, yeah, I don't want to live a whole lo- new life again. So, I don't, isn't it true, though? Isn't it? It's like your 20s and 30s is just like, oh, it's rough. It's like, actually, you think like, oh, youth and wonder. It's like, oh, no, it's, it's very draining. So she famously said, and the famous quote, but, Apparently misquoted, so maybe you could fill me in on that. I want to be alone. Did she say it or did she not say it? Because I heard conflicting things now. Because the conflicting one is, I want to be left alone. Ah, uh, okay. Is that right? right? I think that's... So, that's, sorry, that's it. That's what I've seen. Okay, yes. So the, she sees she sees a difference in that. No, because she, she does now. say she does say I think she says the line in um, the Grand Hotel. Well, I want to be alone. Where have you been? I suppose I can cancel the Vienna contract. I just want to be alone. <laughs> 
You're going to be very much alone, my dear madame. This is the end. Uh, I need to go and rewatch that film now. Yeah. <laughs> And it's yeah. funny because my first, what I didn't realize is my first introduction to Greta actually was through the film Death Becomes Her. Um, because there's a scene when, um, oh my God, I've forgotten the character's name. Uh, but it's Isabella it's Rossellini's character um, is talking about the clients that she has. Uh, the person is a, you know, after 10 years, you have to fake your own death and, you know, you can fake your own death or disappear from the limelight. Or as one of my car- one of my clients simply said, "I want to be alone," and I for years didn't know who that was that she was referencing, and only recently was like, "That's who she was talking about." It was Greta. Yeah, another. And there's been a lot of references, and, and, and equally, like a lot of her films have also been in other films, like as oh, like, really? clips where people have been watching stuff. So yeah, I can't think oh. of all the films off the top of my head. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. It's um, but obviously, if you had to icon. say like. Yeah, if you had to say sort of one film to kind of you know to the children to say go and watch this. If you could, if you've only got like a couple of hours and you and you and you need to watch something to really understand who Greta is, what 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 should they go and watch? Oh, I don't know because I don't know whether I should choose one from like the talky era mm. or the silent movie. What about one from each? Actually, like um, a silent movie, then I think it would have to be um, Flesh of the Devil. Flesh of the Devil, okay, which is. Flash of the Devil, which she's kind of it's it's pretty known as like one of her best silent movie movies. Right. Um Yeah, and I think maybe Camille. It has to be Camille. Why 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 I'm Camille over... now, just so you can see that yeah. line. Uh, I know, but but Camille, something something spoke to you about Camille just then. So what what do you think it was that that like resonated? Well, I think with you also particularly? because she felt that also that was her best performance ever. So she felt herself that that was her best film. Right, so I think right. if an actress just says yep. that, then maybe Didn't trust that's them. the film that, yeah, that's yeah. Where, that's where you're going to get the most of her from. So, yeah, I would I'd probably go with that. All right. I mean, recommended, re- recommended watching then for, for, for our viewers. Yes, indeed. Oh, amazing. Dita, thank you so so much for coming on and chatting about and chatting about Greta and uh, this has been very informative, very fascinating, and I really do just want to go back and watch a load of Greta films now, which I will be doing. Um, but where but can only so... after you, only after you've been playing the song "Dance Bitch," can you? Give... <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Go. It goes without saying. I might actually do the whole, uh, you know, Pink Floyd thing when you play Pink Floyd and watch um, the Wizard of Oz. What I might do is. Uh, uh, be playing dance bitch while just having uh, Greta uh, Garbo films in the background. Well, I'm sure we could edit uh, and... one of her. I know, movies. <laughs> absolutely. That is a hundred percent going to be some social media clip we're going to make. <laughs> yeah. So where where can people find you online? Where can they interact with you and um and and find out more about the the icon that is Dita? So I'm on all major social media platforms. On Instagram, it's Dita underscore Garbo. Um, on Facebook, it's Dita Garbo. X, Dita Garbo. YouTube, Dita Garbo. Perfect. Yeah, so you can basically find me just by typing into your Google search bar, search bar Dita Garbo. Um, yeah, and like I said... Um, generally in my link tree or in my stories i always talk about you know if i've got things coming up um whether that be stuff that i'm doing in the local community or whether that be me going to perform further afield um which i hope i start to get a few more of those bookings because i yeah. really want to go around the country and meet everyone so um yeah amazing yeah, and, and you've been um, around the world as a dancer haven't you so i think it's only right that you also go around the world again as a as a queen yeah, but do you know what the funny thing was? Is like when I came back to the UK after traveling and like I lived yeah. in Madrid, Portugal, the States, oh, wow. Canada, like I've lived in many different countries and traveled yeah. to a lot of countries. But I'd never like done a tour of the UK. So I'm isn't like, that well, wild? Now, it is... <laughs> now it's all going to yeah. happen, isn't it? Because now everybody yes. in the UK knows my name and wants to That's see the me. Thing. So... Now's the time, absolutely. Yeah. Well, listen. If you own, if you own a venue out there somewhere, and you yeah. want Dita, it's her up. 
<laughs> you heard it here and we want Dita and I want to go and see as many Dita shows as possible. So these venues better get to it real quick. Uh, I'll also be at DragCon in January. So if you where go is, to so ja DragCon, I'll be at DragCon. And that's January, when? when is that happening? January 10th and 11th, I believe. And that's I'm amazing. also going to be performing on the main stage. Ah. I wonder what I'll be performing to. Uh, Dita, Dita, da -da -da Dita, Dita, Dita. <laughs> thank you so much Dita really appreciate this thank you for coming on and oh thank you thank you love you and love your your love for Garbo thank you thank you thank you we hope you enjoyed your time at the Dead Divas Lounge feel free to come back whenever you'd like but for now you can exit on the left at the rear take your time and slowly but quickly get out <laughs> <laughs>